morning. This is born in Nova Scotia. It's, it's a beautiful day. It's uh, 21st of April. Um, it's a little chilly. I mean, people will laugh, but it feels warm. It's 12 degrees. Uh, anyway, um, it's sunny and that's all that counts really. It's gorgeous. I hope that someday people can come and visit. It's just so pretty here. It's sort of like a secret. <laughs> But um, that's the Lahave Bakery there. You can look that up online. And, um, but um, people are sitting outside. See, at 12 degrees, people are still sitting outside having lunch at the bakery. Hi, I'm going to do my oatmeal glaze uh, video. Um, and it's pretty simple um, because I'm not a chemist. Uh, so I basically work from books where I research and look for the glazes that I think I'm interested in and I'll pick some out and mix them up and start using them. Um, so what I did for this is I've got three or four books, uh, Mastering Cone 6 Glazes and the one by John Britt uh, and I went through them and picked out some glaze recipes that look like they will be close to what I would need as an oatmeal. Um, and what you will need if you're going to mix glazes, um, and it's cheaper to mix glazes than, than actually buy them. Uh, the raw materials are just powder and you're not shipping water across the country or the continent. It will be talisman sieve, that's right. Um, so they sell these at Bailey Pottery in Kingston, New York. I'm sure just about every pottery supply house sells them. Uh, when I was in England, they had a motorized version of this, which was really nice. Um, not sure where you could get that in North America, but, um, but anyway, this is pretty easy as well. And they sell it with different sieve sizes. I just use the 100 mesh sieve. Um, if you're going to use things like uh, Colmanite, you'd need a 200 mesh sieve. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, 100 mesh should satisfy you. Um, I have a bunch of these to mix up. I got four of them there. And the, the powders were weighed. And if you want to see how to, it's like baking a cake. Uh, you're weighing your ingredients. Um, and I have an earlier video I did last year in 2020 on mixing a glaze. Um, so, so basically, um, go back and look at that old video on mixing a glaze. Um, and, uh, and then when you've got it back in the studio, you add water to it. All right, which is what I just did. Tip, don't add too much water to your glaze. It's easy to add water if it's too thick. It's hard to, to take it out once it's in there. You have to evaporate it out. But anyway, don't um, add too much water. So I've made this so it's like a really thick clotted cream uh, consistency. Um, I can just show you the end of the paintbrush. It's really stuck all over the paintbrush. So, um, but I'm not wearing gloves because I don't have to put my hand in the glaze. Um, it's a good idea to have a watering can to add, add more uh, water if you need to because uh, the last thing you do is uh, add a bit of water uh, just to rinse off your sieve before you mix the next glaze. Keep notes. So all the recipes that I'm doing at the moment I've written out a page to put in a book where I keep my glaze book. I have them in little clear plastic folders um, and uh, so you're keeping notes with what you're doing. If you change your glaze you add it to this so you know what you've done. Um, this is just an experiment, so I've mixed about two, uh, two kilos of each uh, glaze, and uh, I usually mix 10 kilos when I'm doing a glaze batch. Um, but anyway, let's give it a whirl, set you so you can see. Um, you need a paintbrush, but all you do is pour your glaze into the sieve, Pour a little bit of water in your bucket just to make sure you're getting all the ingredients. Once you add the powder to the water, and that's crucial, I never pour the water into a bucket full of powdered glaze. Um, and that's why I mix all my glazes up on the hill too. I don't want to breathe any of this stuff in when it's actually dry. So what I do is I mix my glazes up on the top of the hill above my house like you've seen in that other video uh, and then outside 
I have a bucket with about half full of water or just under and then I'll add the glaze and just pour it in outside so I'm not breathing the dust. See there's a little bit left in the bucket, just a tiny bit of water, just to really make sure. Okay, so that's that. And then the sieve, you just rotate it and the glaze will go through. And it goes through it easy at first, but then after that initial bit of running of water goes through, it's a bit harder. So you keep turning it, mixing it. Then you need your paintbrush. Where did I just oh, ha, There you go. And I just force the rest through because it sits on top of the little plastic insert. Let's lift you up a bit so you can see a bit better. There you go. So you want to try and get as much of this as you can. I have a drill attachment, like a paint stirrer, that I actually totally mix it up. Once it's in the water, the glaze powder, I then use that electric uh, paint. Just put, it's like a stirring thing that you get at the end of an electric drill. And yeah, I just spray down the sieve. try and get the very last bit as much as I can through here there we go and then and then I've got a sponge so I clean out the other bucket. And this one has the name of the glaze. Stick this one on the right bucket. There we go. And then this one now can sit on top of this one. And that's one glaze ready to test. So I'm gonna redo this four more times, or is it three more times? Uh, and that will give me four new oatmeals. Um, I'll put the recipes on, I'll photograph the recipes later on at the end of the video, uh, and we'll see what they look like. Uh, as I've said in the past, these are three base glazes um, and you no, know, there's four base glazes. Uh, I am going to add titanium dioxide, tin oxide, iron ochre, which is a yellowing, uh, kind of creamy looking. It's not as bad, as strong as iron oxide. Uh, so it gives you a sort of yellowish, which takes away the sharpness of the white when you're doing an oatmeal. Uh, and then I add some ilmenite, which is just the speckles that I get in my oatmeal, um, and that very little of that, I just like a, a, a dessert spoonful or a, a tablespoon of that goes a long way. So oatmeal tests, which one is this? This is David Leach 2 that I used to use in 1973 and I've changed it so that it will fire a cone 6 from cone 8. Is, and this does not use any tin or any titanium in it, uh, and look how white it is. And it's silky shiny. First test. I'm not even gonna change this. This worked perfectly. This is what I remember. I changed it to a, a I just changed the felspars, basically. Oh, right. My oatmeal has tin in it, 7%, and that's expensive. This has no tin in it, and it's white. Mm -hmm. Satin matte glaze. I got this one 
and modified it out of, uh, I think it was John Britt's book. I'll have to look it up in my recipe book closer so you can see if it's better. The light is, I'm not sure if you can get it just right, but it, it's satin matte. Both of these are look, they look perfect. One, where did I find this one? Folk Art White. I'll have to look in my recipe book, um, but that's intense. That is a keeper for sure. So three out of three. This one is a great white glaze, Val Cushing White. Look at that. It's a, this one is beautiful too. I could make this into oatmeal by adding my iron ochre, which is what I did to this one. Okay, so we've got four new, and look, that none of them ran. I mean, these are perfect straight off. But the David Leach white satin is great because it's got the semi-matte quality without any titanium, feels very smooth. So my guess is this one will be fine the way it is. I don't need to add any tin to it at all. And over the top of gloss glazes, I'm hoping, that's my next series of tests. So I'm gonna put it over my Tenmuku Gold and over my bright blue and over my tub. It's time to glaze all those jars. Um, I have made a lot of jars. I've got some in the kiln. I used them for glaze tests yesterday for the, all these oatmeal tests. And then uh, I've got a whole bunch over here. So I'll give you a quick view. I, I'm pretty sure I've done glazing videos before so you know how to glaze. Um, uh, I can do another one in the future if it'll help for people, but uh, but anyway, when the way I glaze, I actually label a shelf a certain color, put an assortment of pieces on that shelf. As you can see, the bottom ones, which is Tenmuku Gold there, I've already done those. I'm going to do bright blue here and so on. And then they will dry overnight. Um, so I'm going to dry these overnight. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, this is where I usually do with my oatmeal and double dipping. I usually let things thoroughly dry first and then I'll double dip the second day uh, and I get less crawling and uh, less flaking at that by doing it that way. Uh, and uh, I will do my oatmeals tomorrow. Um, so I'm not going to glaze the bottoms of these. I'm going to write the names on the, of the glaze combo that I do. Uh, so we'll be doing, I've got four oatmeals. So I'm going to do four pieces up there with the oatmeal on them. Uh, and I'll try maybe a, a, the other pieces with another color plus the oatmeal just to see the way I normally do with my oatmeals how they all respond because wouldn't it be nice if the cheapest batch to make is the one that looks the best. Oh. Morning, it's the uh, day after the firings and now I've got to unpack these kilns but I wanted to go over a little bit in the oatmeal testing. Um, we've got four new oatmeals that we're testing at the moment um, but I wanted to show what I'm looking for um, because you've seen pieces before where I, these, this is my traditional oatmeal that's doing this over Tenmuku Gold. So it kind of melts in, but shows up. And it can show up much better than this if you're actually staying at cone five and a half than you do if you go, get to cone six. In the uh, blue, you can see the oatmeal fades in a bit more. Um, and so this is my traditional oatmeal over bright blue. And then I've got it on other glazes here. This is an old piece I had hanging around. You can see how white the oatmeal is. And this was on, uh, yeah, this was on a, a cone five uh, Tenmuku gold, which didn't melt as much. But, um, so that's what I'm looking for, something that will work with those. Uh, um, this one is bright blue with satin matte glaze. Uh, over the top and that is pretty darn good um, so that shows up over the blue quite a lot um, and this piece was actually this was fast cooled so um, so this didn't have wasn't given any extra time but look at the oatmeal and it's just the same basically um, so I would say that that's got a huge potential satin matte glaze This is one of the pieces that I did with the painting of the flowers. So, 
Let's so let's tilt you down. I might have to be careful with these and, and come back in a few minutes. Wow, pretty good. Which one is it? Satin matte glaze. Um, to try and get them to be the same as my other original, and that's it. This is actually like the original oatmeal. Satin matte glaze. I'll have to look at the recipe, I'll post them at the end of the video, and, and I'll give you an idea of which ones would be the cheaper oatmeals to make. So, can you see down here? Oh. Let's see how hot it gets. As a potter, we don't have sensitive nerves anymore anyway. David Leach 2. Uh, this one has a different... It's satin, for sure. Uh, it didn't run at all, I don't think, into the glaze much. Uh, this was cone five and a half. Um, so that one is a more stable glaze over the top. Now that makes sense because this was a cone 8 glaze that I lowered to cone 6 uh, and this was only cone 5 and a half. What happened here? This is David Leach 2 again over the bright blue and there's a little bit of it left there you, of the oatmeal, but what it's done is darken the di the light blue. No, not bright. It's bright blue. That's right. It's in the in the mastering cone six glazes. But look at that. It just brightened the blue. Now here's another one. I've brought some samples over. This is my bright blue with my oatmeal, uh, my standard oatmeal, and it pretty much dissolves in there too. So there's a little bit of it left here. So the bright blue when you put oatmeal over the top. It's just going to absorb most of that oatmeal. Um, so you'd have to apply it fairly thick, I guess. But look, it's very shiny. And look at the difference. Uh, where was the other one? Uh, the turquoise. Over this one, it stayed fairly satin. There's a little sheen to it. Um, but this one, it melted in and went totally shiny. So that is very interesting. This is the mouse brown again with DL2. Did I do two of these? No, that was satin. Look at the difference between these two. Satin matte glaze, and this is the DL2. So I like the DL2 over the top. It, it also soaks in a little bit more. Um, and that is probably because we don't have any tin or titanium in this glaze in DL2. Uh, to opacify it. So it's just adding, getting into the other glaze matrix that's underneath it without any opacity. Uh, although on the rim, where it was thicker, you can see there's a little bit of the actual oatmeal still left there. But it does tend to blend right in. Another one here. This is F oh, Folk Art White. And I love this glaze on its own. And you can see it still has some of its oatmeal showing up. But it has soaked in, once again, to the actual blue. But it shows up. I mean, it obviously shows up. There's a, a line there where it's a little bit more grayish, maybe above the line. And the same on the outside. Some clear glaze pieces. Oh. Can we see this one? I'll oh, bring it a bit closer. These are a bit heavier and they're a little hot. Um, this is one of the lavender pieces. These are on order. They're meant for the little trash cans for the bathroom. But um, so that turned out pretty good with the brushwork and the lavender. I have another clear glaze that I'm going to try. Um, so these ones I painted very elaborately. Oh. Can we see? Okay, bring it a bit closer. All right, here we go. So these ones, you can see all the way around, a lot bigger. And I added some reds in there as well, and some yellows. The yellows are fading out a lot. They did on the bowls too. Um, so I just ordered some new underglazes in yellows. But, um, but that's very pretty. That's kind of make you think of summer. 
Yeah, this place has a little milkiness to it, which you can't tell there. But um, but I think I have another glaze recipe for cone six clear. Um, that a guy from West Virginia I knew a long time ago gave me years ago. I'm going to try that mixing that one up as well. Here we go. So that's pretty. I think these all look nice in the gallery. Right, so this is the next layer down. Let's have a look at some of the pots that have just the glaze on. Okay, this is David Leach 2 with nothing underneath it, just on its own. And that is a very pretty oatmeal glaze. That looks just like the one that I have over white clay. Um, and it's silky, has the same texture and everything. It's very nice. Um, there's the lid. These were just little sugar jars, basically. But I thought it'd be nice to have them with a straight glaze on it. Okay, what do we have here? Val Cushing White. So this one is slightly shinier than the actual David Leach 2, but it still has a satin matte quality, which I think is really nice. And I added Ionoka and Ilmenite to this one. Um, so it gives it a creamy look rather than a white. But just 1% iron ilmenite and then 2% iron ochre. So basically, it's a very sweet little jar. See the dip? Let's hold the two of them together, maybe. One has a slight whiter look. The, yeah, this one's slightly creamier looking. Okay, so what's this one? This is folk art white over the gray that I use, the mouse brown as it's called in Mastering Cone 6 Glazes. So that has a really nice quality to it. Yeah, the Folk Art White is a user. Yeah, you know, I love that glaze. That's going to be a new keeper in my studio. And uh, this firing schedule was uh, 108 degrees an hour up to 2205 and then it was allowed to cool um, you know, on its own, naturally fast cool to 2000 degrees, and then I slow cooled it 125 degrees down to 1750 and had a, a one hour soak. And that's why I think this happened, because when you slow cool the Tenmaku gold, it gets really yellow and gold and less shiny, so it's more matte. Um, and, that, and then which glazes over it? This is David Leach 2 over the top of it and I'm going to try this again in a different cooling. I've got these some more tests going through uh, and um, but you can see that has a really nice coloring but it has a definite matte quality to it. So I'm going to go back to my firing schedule for Tenmiku Gold that I've already established uh, and see what this glaze does to it as well. But that's a very nice ball. This one is folk art wow i love this one yeah okay folk art white again over the top of other glazes looks like it's a really good look how brown it went at the rim and then you've got the oatmeal showing up underneath and even some pinks in there as well i'm not sure if the light is good in here but those are really subtle pinks with the golds i mean that's really pretty That is another keeper with the with the blue green copper red. Uh, which one is it? SMG. So that's the uh, satin matte glaze, and that is really. You see all the notes I'm going to have to keep with this, because look at the pink, the sort of peach color there, going down to the oatmeal and then the blue. Um, and that must be the iron ochre in the glaze, because all of these had iron ochre and ilmenite added to them. And this is super pretty. I'm not sure how the light's catching it, but, but that's got lots of variation. And this is over variegated blue 
I'm now, I've watered my variegated blue down, which I rarely add water, I usually add glazed thinner, but it's been running so much and getting thick when I apply it. So I think that was it, and look at this, no runs. Solved the variegated blue problem. And it still has the milkiness to it, which I like, um, but it gets really textural if you add it, you know, with it with the other glazes before. But they, this oatmeal did not make it run, SMG, satin matte glaze. Look at the colors in the top there. And this one, the oatmeal soaked in, it's the glaze with the, uh, you know, variegated blue again, but the oatmeal, no, it's the folk art white. Wow. I thought because the, the DL2 has been actually soaking into the other glazes, but this is the folk art white and it's set, but the color's rich. I mean, it's really breaking quite well in that piece. But once again, no running on the, on the actual variegated blue. And the folk art white over the top of the Tenmaku gold. And that's very nice too. It's more subtle. It has soaked in to the Tenmaku gold. But you've got really good colors in there. But this next firing I'm going to do, I'm going to do my Tenmaku gold firing schedule. Look at that. I like the folk art white, so I decided to just glaze by pouring the folk art white over the top of the speckle clay. Um, and that is very pretty. Lots of variation just on its own, folk art white. We have this, let's see. I've got my little step stool here. Uh, folk art white, just on a little jar. So that's a really nice, warm, creamy oatmeal. And this one is satin matte glaze. Uh, and it's very satin. And it's got the speckles now, and it's on white clay. So basically, we've got some satin matte, speckled, creamy color from white that was before. Uh, this one is Val Cushing White over the top of Tenmaku Gold. So it really did soak in again. Folk Art White over the top of Turquoise, Blue Green, Copper Red. So you definitely see the variation in that, where that top part is dipped in the oatmeal, and especially on the inside. This is Folk Art White, this one which I like best is satin matte glaze. So I will have to write those notes whenever I do, because I prefer this to this, so. All right, so this one is Val Cushing White. And it really greened off the blue, green, copper, red, which is turquoise, obviously. But it's given it a greenish quality way over double dipped. And notice not one run in this kiln, nothing ran. So this firing schedule and then thinning the green and the, and the uh, variegated blue worked. This one is Val Cushing White. So it made the gray glaze go shinier up above. This one is the variegated blue and you can see it very, it didn't move at all practically where I wiped it off on, oh, where I wiped it off on the bottom, it didn't run at all. Variegated blue again. 
with Val Cushing white. So it makes the variegated blue go really variegated up above. And where it's on its own, it's still that milky gray. And then Val Cushing white again, you really do have a darker blue effect over the bright blue. How to get dark blue from bright blue? Wow, no, without adding extra cobalt. Isn't that something? Cobalt's expensive, so you know how to get dark blue now without adding any extra. But, um, all right, that's, every, that's all the pieces out of the firing. Um, there's a lot to take in there. I have to look at these and write some notes. Uh, I'm gonna do one more glaze test. Uh, with all the pieces are already glazed mostly. There's just over there. I'm going to be uh, glazing those with the oatmeals over the top um, as a sort of a thought. The tin and the titanium dioxide, when you add them to the glazes, um, I think make the opacity last when you double dip them over other pieces. So that's my first thought about this. My so next step with these glazes, I would add some extra tin or titanium to them just to see how they hold up then over the top of other glazes. So, uh, all right. The last firing before I post the video of the oatmeal tests, um, but before we open this up, I'm going to give you a quick flash, sorry about that, of the glaze recipes that we've been using for these, and then uh, you can screenshot this, there you go, to get all my information there. And you, I'm at, ooh, get it right out, just so you can see it, there you go. So these are the recipes, just screenshot them or just freeze the frame and write it down, whichever. It's easier than me answering everybody's question to give all these recipes out via emails, which takes a long time. So, um, so either do a screenshot or just freeze the frame and write them down. All right, so these are the four recipes. What do we have? This firing profile too is, um, uh, the last, well, normally up to 2,000 degrees, just a normal firing. And then from 2,000 degrees to 2,205, I did 108 degrees an hour. And then I dropped it 250 degrees. Oh, I soaked it for 15 minutes at 2,205. And then dropped it 250 degrees an hour down to 1,750 where I did a one hour soak. All right, so that's the firing schedule. Now this is the latest on David Leach 2. See if I can get the gloss to show up for you a little bit. See, that's got a sheen to it, so it's semi-matte, which is perfect. That's what I'm looking for. But I added iron ochre to this one um, to actually get that sort of brownish tint to it, because this is on white clay. So, um, so that's turning up perfect. This is a perfect glaze, but how does it work on top of others? That's the key. This one is satin matte glaze. So this is also perfect as an oatmeal. So if you're putting this onto your jars, just straight as it is, both of these look perfect. And all that David Leach, this is David Leach. And this one is satin matte glaze, which I will just refer to as SMG and DL2, I guess in future. This is Val Cushing white. And look at that, speckles. Now it's got the kind of creaminess to it as well because I added the ochre. But anyway, these are great satin glazes. This is a bit shiny than the other two, uh, but these are great. These are really nice oatmeal glazes. And so folk art white was perfect straight away, so I didn't bother with that one. Okay, lids. Um, this is the uh, mouse brown which is a little shinier than normal because I dropped the kiln faster. When I slow cool this, it goes matte, mouse gray or mouse brown. And the lids, let's pop those there for a minute. 
And notice green not running at all in this firing schedule. And I watered the green down a bit because it had just been getting too thick in the bucket. Okay, look at that. Whoa, very nice. What do we have? David, David Leach 2. And that one, let's see what we did here. I, I just let you look at it, now I've forgotten what it did. So uh, what I added, let's get them out. So I added, okay, I added three and a half percent tin to David Leach's glaze, and it's a perfect oatmeal. It's as good as the other ones that I, the one that I originally started with. So this is beautiful. And this one is a, that's the wrong word. There you go. So this is a little garlic keeper. What do we have next? Okay, this one. Um, and look, it's perfect, no running. And I wipe right to the edge, you know, so basically, this is actually really good. This is Val Cushing White, less successful as an oatmeal over the top of another glaze, but if, I'm not sure if you can see the variations. It's got lots of color variations in that gray. And where it gets thicker, it's definitely doing the oatmeal on a flat surface, but where it's running, it isn't. So this is a garlic keeper too. Right, so that one I would say will be my least favorite so far. Wow, look at those textural runs. That is really nice. I only glazed down to the halfway point when I was doing the oatmeal on these. And look, it's, it's run all the way down and look how it ran almost to the edge. Oops, almost to the edge there, but didn't go down and touch the bottom. And I glaze the oatmeal's thick on this. Who is this? Folk Art White. Well, there you go. I didn't have to change anything in this glaze anyway. It looks great the way it is. A little honey pot. There's another video on all these jars coming as well. Next. Green has been running, remember? Uh, and this one is not running at all. So I just watered the glaze down. After adding glaze thinner for a, a long time, the glaze was getting too thick. So when I dipped, it was really getting thick on the pieces. We're back to a good, good green glaze now. And this one has Val Cushing White again. Uh, so it doesn't do an oatmeal. It just makes the green richer. And that's good in itself, basically. Doesn't even do the oatmeal on the where it gets on a flat surface. Uh, and this one is a garlic keeper again. How was the firing? 2205, there's the perfect. The cones are, are completely down. This one's resting on the others. So this was a good cone six firing. Yabba dabba do. Look at that. This is satin matte glaze over ten maku. With a blue bottom on the piece as well. But that satin mat is a good oatmeal over the top of Ten Maku. And this one is my blue green copper red with, I bet it's folk art white. Let's see. No, it's satin mat glaze again. Satin mat is working perfect as an oatmeal over other glazes. Look at the runs there. So that, that totally opacified the turquoise that's underneath it and all that. And so this is a great oatmeal, satin matte glaze. You've got the recipe, I just gave you it. Look at this, this is satin matte, yep, satin matte glaze. So this is, I think this is the best one of the bunch. You know, we'll see as the rest of the firing is unloaded. But this is really a great oatmeal. You've got nice textures, you can see through it in places and all that. No lids for these yet. Oh, wee, what did I do here? This is my dark green, uh, but it did block up a lot of the holes in my oatmeal because it ran a lot. So this is a, a garlic keeper with very few holes left because it ran so much. But this is David Leach 2. This is the same dark green that I have, Val Cushing 
white over the top and it makes the dark green richer but it didn't run as much as the other one and this one is my regular apple green with DL2 which is David Leach 2 and that just made it it's a little oatmeal on the top but it made it richer it just made it richer as a glaze for the green which is good in itself, as I said. So, but this is the one I was waiting to show. Yeah, ba da ba do again. DL two. Yep, David Leach. Now this is what I remember when I was at high school in 1973. We used to put this glaze over the top of a ten maku, which used to come out mostly black. Um, and so I'm still looking for that black ten maku again. Uh, but it used to do these mottling oatmeal look. Look on the inside there. It used to do that, which I loved and, and I still like it today. So this is back to doing it, even though I've lowered the temperature by at least, well, it's gone from cone eight to cone six now. So it's doing it again. So this is good. And it's a satin glaze, feels good and all that. So that's really nice. Val Cushing White over the Tenmaku as well. Now I double dip these with oatmeal to get a really strong oatmeal to see if it would opacify. Uh, and that's why I think it's running more, but it isn't running on the shelf because I wiped way up from the bottom. So basically that's really pretty too, Val Cushing White. Oh, look how it stayed oatmeal on the top too. So that's interesting. So maybe on plates, you'd still get the oatmeal when it's on a flat surface. Folk art white, over 10 Maku gold. There's lots of deep color in there, but it's much darker. So the folk art white definitely has less opacifying quality and it's really beautiful as a, trans as a glaze just on its own on a piece. That's the wrong one for that one. Uh, so this was a garlic keeper, so this must be this lid. Or it could be this one. So that's really pretty now with the lid. Look at that, this is what I was after. This is the Tenmaku Gold, you know, with that oatmeal over the top. And this one is the DL2, I'm pretty sure. Yep, DL2. So we, I have got my glaze that I've been searching for for three decades. And it's really nice. I would say it's even nicer than it used to be. But I will look for that Tenmaku that I have from high school and see whether I can actually um, find that one again. Is this the one for this? Yes, it is. No, maybe that's the wrong lid for that one. That's the one. Another honey jar. And this one is Val Cushing White. They're all working. They're all really nice glazes. The dark green. It's interesting to find the lids. That's not it. it, must be this one. Yep. But I've only got three holes for my garlic. Oh, yep, three holes open still. So that's going to be a sad garlic keeper. There's the one with Val Cushing White again. This is the one with DL2 again. Like I said, if anybody likes any of these pieces, you can just email me. At the end of the video, you'll see the email. It's vsmithpots at eastlink.ca anyway. This one, I think, is this one. Nope. That one. These are beautiful little keeper, garlic keepers. And that's my favorite, of course, a satin matte glaze. This is the oatmeal that is just beautiful feeling. So... 
David Leach 2. This is really nice. I think it's improved because you've still got that kind of ochery oatmeal flecking to it, but it shows up really well over the turquoise. Another honey pot. It's got more brown in it than I kind of wanted in my oatmeal. So I guess the ilmenite is um, melting a little bit in the ilmenite matrix in the glaze. The apple green again. Actually, this time it's not running at all. So we, as I said, we're back to normal with this. Uh, can I, a satin matte glaze over the top of it, over the green. So you've got the oatmeal, but it's more greened out a little bit with the glaze underneath. Wow, this is the one that's really rich, satin matte glaze. It looks like leather almost. But what's really nice about it is on the top of the piece, if I can stop that falling off, look at the mottling. That's really pretty, satin matte glaze over Tenmaku gold. I double dipped, so I wonder what would happen with a single dip. Over variegated blue, whoa. That's the nicest variegated blue one we've had. Okay, so variegated blue, that is very sweet. And that's a honey jar, so it must be this one. So what do we have? That's with satin matte glaze, so this one so seems like it's working over everything now. We haven't tried any blues though. Okay, Folk Art White, ah, makes my bright blue look a little bit like my variegated blue. But that's really nice too, got some nice drips and runs going on in there. And this is a garlic, so uh, there's the lid. No, that's not the lid for that one, that's the lid for a different one. So the lid, is, oh, there's the lid. All right, so that one works good over bright blue, Folk Art White. Ah, uh, let's see, which one would this be? <sighs> Can't guess, I'm gonna say David Leach. Nope, it's Val Cushing White. And it darkens the blue, that's what it did before, it darkened the blue. Wrong lid. There we go, another honey jar. But the uh, Val Cushing White seems to just darken the blue. See how this one ran all the time before? And I'm, I'm dipping it in less time in the glaze now, but it's still a good running glaze. It almost got down there. Um, so, gotta be careful of that. And this is Folk Art White. So it made the variegated blue more variegated, basically. And it's a honey pot. Oh, this looks terrific. Oh, uh, we've got to say that's a satin matte glaze. Yep, satin matte glaze. So works on everything. If you want an oatmeal in your studio, and I think every studio should have at least one oatmeal glaze. Um, I've always had three. Um, I would say satin matte glaze is the one to go with just from the evidence so far. Val Cushing White makes the variegated blue just get more variegated. And this is variegated blue with DL2, which also is doing a good job. There's some really nice runs going down there. Wait till I do this on some fluted pieces. That's my next test with all these. Nice little garlic keeper. David Leach 2. It darkens and it also has an oatmeal quality. And these were double dipped with oatmeal. So it takes a bit more with this one to get that oatmeal to show up. 
but it's really nice. You get a nice dark blue out of that. So you get like folk art white makes the turquoise get even greener, which is a good thing. All right. A very long video. I'm sorry about that, but there's a lot of information in here. Satin matte glaze is great over the mouse gray, which is in the, in the book, it's called Mouse Brown, Mastering Cone 6 Glazes. Really nice. These are really nice little jaws. Most of the prices of these little jaws are gonna be around $39 for each piece. Valkushin White also greens the turquoise, but you do see the oatmeal. 39 Canadian dollars, I should have said. This was an odd piece I had hanging out, and this is satin matte glaze again, see? It's the best oatmeal. Uh, this is dark green with the uh, satin matte glaze over it. This is beautiful. Really pretty. I, I sell these to the La Haye bookstore next door. Let's do, this is from an old video. I had some of these bottles left over. Satin matte glaze again. I stick a stopper in these and you can use them as oil and vinegar bottles. Or any dressing. Oh, wow. This one is satin matte glaze again. This is beautiful. Le it looks like leather, but look at the fluting, how it textures down the fluting and makes it run down. Sat I did all these satin matte glaze, if I remember right, yeah. All these bottles. Because I knew this was going to be my favorite oatmeal. It's better than the other oatmeal that I found. It's less, I'd have to look at what's in it again, of course, but I think it's less tin in this one too. Really close to the bottom on that one. Yeah, some of these, one of these bottles is reserved for Christine. In the blue color, I think. So yeah, you go, Christine, I did this just for you. There's three of them for you to pick from. Satin matte glaze again over turquoise. And with all those yellowy ochre bits showing up, this is a beautiful glaze combo. More for La Haye River Books. My stilt collapsed on this one, so I'll have to grind a little bit there. The stilt pins do collapse after a while, but look at the run down there. Satin matte glaze again. Look at the richness, satin matte glaze. Yep, over the blue. This is the oatmeal I suggest everybody has in their studio if you want a good oatmeal. The recipe is earlier in the video. Ooh, look at this, isn't that incredible? And this is over Tenmaku Gold on the bottom and then bright blue up above. It's a good combo. Very nice. My next series of tests is clear glaze. I'm going to try doing, developing a clear glaze that's really good. I've got several. Yep, satin matte glaze again over the turquoise. Such a beautiful feel and color variation in these pieces. These mugs come out at like, with tax about 36.95. 
with the writing on the bottom. You can order them from the bookstore if you want. La Have River Books. Green with folk art white again, so it really does make it sort of deep green. That's a beautiful forest green. And another one of those ones where it ran a lot. So I'm going to fire these upside down and see if we can get that to run back down. Because the texture is really nice. Yeah, you can see where the clay is almost visible at the top. All the glaze ran down. So I had these glaze from previously, I, think, I guess, before I watered down the glazes. All right. Okay. So that's the, that's the end of the oatmeal series. So recipes earlier on, just take a screenshot. Uh, I would say get the satin mat white for your oatmeal. But I also think the folk art white um, is, is terrific as well. So you've got that recipe there. Um, Val Cushing White is um, great as a nice glaze on its own, but it doesn't do much over the others that darken them a bit. Uh, and, um, and then the, uh, what was the other one? Uh, David Leach 2 works great too, um, but not over all glazes, but some. So DL2, well, I think DL2 was the cheapest one to make. So take a look at the recipes.